Hey there. In this Programmer Reviews Programming Games video, we're going to look at Logic Bots. We're going to check out what kind of game it is, what programming aspect it has, and if playing it will help you learn about programming. We'll also see if the game is actually any fun as, well, just the game. Now, Logic Bots is a game where you put together robots and you program them. I tried to think of some kind of funny description for this game, but, uh, well, it, it pretty much does exactly what it says. The basic idea is you're given some kind of a task to complete. For example, it could be follow the colored line, escape the maze, avoid collisions with other robots, or something along those lines. But to complete these tasks, you must build a robot to do it. And this robot building in the game is a two-part job. First, you create the robot itself by combining different parts and then you program it using a wiring system. Now, typically this means that you'll pick from one of the available robot body choices, you'll slap some wheels on it and then add some task-specific parts. For example, if you want to make your robot to follow a line, you might add in some parts that can detect a line that's drawn on the ground. The parts themselves, they don't do anything on their own, so the next step is to wire them together. If you want to follow that line that we have been talking about, you could have a wire from the line detector into the robot's engine. This means that the engine would then start turning the wheels when the line detector can see a line and when it can't, the engine would stop turning the wheels. This building system is actually quite flexible. There's a decent variety of available robot bodies, and when you place parts on it, you can choose exactly where it goes, you can choose the orientation, or you can attach some other pieces on the body and then attach your piece or the parts on the other piece, and so on. So you can build the robots pretty much exactly as you would like for that particular mission in hand. However, those missions do tend to limit your choices both by the budget available and how many parts you have. But there's often a number of different robot designs that can complete each task in a nice way. The wiring system used to connect those parts together is actually reasonably intuitive, even if you have never done any programming before. Most parts on the robot, you can just wire them together. Usually, each part that you can wire together creates a signal or it reacts to a signal. For example, if we have that line sensor which detects that line on the ground, it's something that creates a signal. An engine, on the other hand, can react to a signal. So if you wire those two things together, you can make your robot do something. In addition to just the robot parts that you put on the robot body, the wiring system also has a few additional pieces to use. Let's say you want to use two sensors and you want to move the robot forwards only when both sensors are detecting something. In, in that case, you can use some additional logic components in the wiring screen to do this. There's quite a lot of available wiring components. There's some for doing logic, there's some for doing comparisons between numbers or other values. There's components for doing math and some other things as well but a lot of them are not going to be available to you until you reach some of the later, more complicated missions. There's a lot of those missions in the game as well, and they offer plenty of challenge both for beginning programmers and programming gurus. For beginners, the wiring system is nice, since you don't really need to think about the specific steps or sequence quite as much. Typically, when you write a program in an actual programming language, you have to be quite careful in what order you put your commands in. When using the wiring system in logic bots, it's more like saying, uh, when a signal comes from here, I want this thing to happen. This makes it a lot easier to approach, since the building blocks that you have for this are easy to use. But this is also not to say that the programming model is too simplistic. Once you get into those more complex tasks, there's quite a lot of things that you need to think about. There's in fact so much to think about that it's enough to challenge even those who have been programming for quite a long time. For example, one of the more challenging tasks is to follow a set of waypoints using a GPS system. It sounds simple enough on paper, 
turn the robot until it faces the correct direction and then just have it drive forwards. But in practice, the terrain on this level, it has ditches you can get stuck in, there's rocks that you have to avoid, etc. So not only do you need to create logic to rotate the robot towards the GPS coordinate, you also need to have parts that help you navigate the terrain and you need to include logic for choosing whether you are currently trying to avoid something or whether you are currently following those GPS coordinates. This makes it so that while the basic building blocks are simple, you do need to combine them to build fairly complicated mechanisms. For both beginners and more advanced programmers, this can be a quite nice introduction to how one might approach building robots, maybe even in real life. While the system in LogicBots is a lot simpler than what building a robot would involve in reality, the basic ideas are there. Putting together the robot body with its parts, and then wiring together the different pieces with some added logic to make the robot do something. However, as a teaching tool for programming, the game is maybe a bit lacking. While the wiring system does allow for complicated mechanisms, it doesn't really reflect what programming is in practice. You don't really have the kind of structure that most programming languages would use. But what logic bots can teach you is, well, logic. Although the programming system is simplified, Using it requires skills you might need with actual programming. You have to make some kind of deductions about how the robot is going to behave and how to make it do what you want based on the sensors and the other parts you have. Especially in the more complex missions, you end up with a lot of things going on simultaneously, which means you have to be very careful about how you approach the solution. The wiring system does hide the little fiddly programming bits, but it leaves the kind of logical thinking that you have to use in order to solve all these problems that you can face. This is both kind of a blessing and a curse though. The good thing is that you can focus on what's often the most interesting part, that is figuring out the steps to solve a problem. You're not going to have to worry about all the potentially annoying and mundane programming things. Instead, you can just focus on solving the problem and making your robot do a thing. But the downside is that by removing the mundane programming parts, it also removes the organization. When you have a sufficiently complex wiring system in place, it becomes really difficult to understand what's going on. You have to follow each wire really carefully and make mental notes of everything, because it's just it's just sort of a big mess of blocks and wires. This is something you would normally solve in programming by creating your own blocks, so to speak, which hide this complexity, but since you can't do anything like that in logic bots, you're left with this hard to follow mess. But this is mostly a downside when you're trying to understand why your solution isn't working. While the game does provide some ways you can see what's going on while the robot is running, sometimes it's just easier to just start from scratch, because modifying a half-functional solution can be a little bit difficult. Now, let's talk about the scores for the game. First, is Logic Bots fun to play? When you're just starting the game, there's a little bit of a learning curve. I tried jumping straight in because, haha, I'm a great programmer, and then I actually had to go back and uh, um, do the tutorials um, because turns out I wasn't quite as great as I thought. But <laughs> the tutorials do a pretty good job of explaining the basics. And once you've got the hang of things, LogicBot is very easy to just jump in and have fun with. Pick a mission, think of some ideas for how you could solve it, and then throw it together a robot and see what happens. Now the graphics are nice enough, and the sounds and music, while maybe a bit repetitive after a while, they're not annoying or anything. They do the important thing. You get a really clear idea of what's going on and what your robot is doing. There's a lot of missions to play in the game as well, but most of them are locked at the start. You unlock them by completing missions and passing certain challenges that each mission has. The challenges tend to require a fairly specific approach, 
which can sometimes be a bit annoying. But on the other hand, they also force you to think of your solution often in different ways than you otherwise might, which is nice. But there's definitely enough variety to keep you interested in playing and completing those missions. There's even uh, funky stuff like lawnmower robots, which I found kind of amusing. I mean, I definitely didn't expect to see that. But some of the later missions can be quite difficult and they can be a bit frustrating to try and figure out. So if you kind of get stuck and you can't complete any of them, it could mean that some of the later missions might just remain locked for you and you can't get to them. In addition to these missions, the game also has a sandbox mode. You can use all the available parts in the game in it, but it doesn't really do much otherwise, as you don't really have any kind of goal in the sandbox. I'm giving Logic Bots a 4.5 out of 5 for fun. Overall, it's a great robot building game with a lot of variety and reasonably intuitive building mechanics. It falls short of a 5 because more complex robots can become very hard to understand due to the wiring system and because the missions sometimes have very harsh limits. A free play mode for the missions, where you could use as many parts and build as a crazy robot as you like, that would be a great addition. So what about the programming aspects? Can LogicBots help you learn programming? The programming system in LogicBots, it doesn't really reflect a lot of real world systems. While it does offer a lot of variety, it focuses more on the logic aspect than programming itself. But it can be helpful in learning problem solving. You have to take a very methodical approach for the missions. For example, how would you approach solving a maze with only an engine and a sensor that can tell you how far you are from a wall? You have to take what you have and really break it down into smaller parts. Okay, so, well, Turn on the engines because the robot needs to go forwards. Uh, okay, if the sensor says that the wall is real close, then we have to turn away from the wall, and so on. The programming model maybe vaguely matches something called declarative programming, because you have to declare the parts, kind of, you know, I have an engine and I have this sensor, and then you declare how these things are connected to each other. Uh, the sensor sends a signal to the engine. And what happens under the hood to make the engine turn when the sensor says so, it doesn't matter as long as it happens. So that's, that's kind of where you can find some similarities between declarative programming and logic bots, but yeah, it's a, a bit of a stretch maybe. So I'm giving logic bots a 2 out of 5 in practicality. While it doesn't really teach you programming per se, it can definitely teach you skills that are valuable to have as a programmer. In conclusion, LogicBots is perhaps the best robot building game out there if you are interested in making robots that do things on their own instead of, you know, using your keyboard to control them manually. The game has a ton of stuff to play with, and I'd say it's going to be about 20 to 40 hours if you finish all missions and all tasks. So far, I played it about halfway through, and I'm already going at 18 hours. I would definitely recommend checking it out if you're curious about robots, and I mean, who isn't? It's great value at its current price, and there's even a demo available. You can find links to the game and demo in the description below the video, along with more info on the criteria that I use for scoring these games in these videos. Okay, that's it for this video. I hope you found it interesting. There's going to be more programming reviews in this channel in the future, and there's also some links on the screen to some other things you might like. Thanks for watching, and hopefully I'll see you next time.